evolution is a massive topic with lots and various different parts to it. However, to pique your interest, I'm just going to cover some small parts of it and see if you want to follow it on from there. A couple of elements of evolution, there's um, what's called convergent evolution and parallel evolution. They're related, but slightly different. Convergent evolution is where different creatures find different ways of converging or arriving at a method of doing things. For example, there's flight, which develop differently in birds, bats and insects. They all have wings, but feathers are highly adapted hairs. Bats have stretched skin across the forelimb. Insects, the first creatures to develop wings, probably evolved them as lobes or other structures on the sides of their bodies. Parallel evolution is where the same solution is found for doing things where the creatures actually don't share a common ancestor with the ability. The so gliding mammals, which leap from tree to tree like sugar gliders and flying squirrels, are a nice example of this. However, to see how evolution happens, you can actually look at uh, creatures called the Tenrix in Madagascar. Madagascar is a very large island off the coast of Africa, and as such, the wildlife are rather unique. The island is large enough for substantial amounts of different habitats to exist, but since it actually split off from India about 88 million years ago, uh, the wildlife developed in isolation from the rest of the world. In other places where hedgehogs, porcupines, shrews and moles would fill the habitats, this time the tenrex fill all of these roles and have developed specialist body parts to help them adapt to the particular habitat, food source or even predators. Some tenrex are semi-aquatic, some live in trees, others even live underground. You can also follow how animals change in evolution, uh, for instance from fearsome hunting dinosaurs with many large teeth through the Archaeopteryx with a small early bird with sharp pointed teeth. And now we have a wide variety of beaked birds that today are all toothless in the traditional sense, though you can get some geese with a serrated edge running along the side of their beaks. What then of the future? Could geese evolve back into a T-Rex? Well, since in large parts of the world we've uh, either wiped out or dramatically reduced the numbers of top predators like wolves, tigers and leopards, as a result there is a space for a new top predator to occupy. Whilst it is possible that, say, emus and ostriches have the potential to fill in these gaps, the progression requires really far too many steps for them to get there quickly enough before other creatures like wild dogs fill in the gap and become top predator. So we'll probably be safe from a geese T-Rex at least for a few million years.